Hi guys, I'm Eric, and welcome back to Canada Casino, your guide for online gambling. If you enjoy playing blackjack, but you find it hard to win, I'm about to break down the very best technique that'll guarantee you profit, and that is card counting. I feel like Kevin Spacey. Firstly, what exactly is card counting? You may have heard of it or even seen it in some movies, such as 21, but basically it's a system that allows you to predict what cards will be drawn next, therefore giving you an informed choice on whether to hit, stand, or double down. I like to also mention that card counting, contrary to popular belief, is not actually illegal. However, casinos are private businesses and are allowed to kick out anyone who they suspect is card counting. Nonetheless, you shouldn't feel bad for card counting because all you're really doing is using your brain to win at a game, and casinos make all their money from you losing. Card counting is actually quite simple, and with a bit of practice, you could jump straight into it and see results. All it takes is some very basic knowledge of math and learning blackjack basic strategy. Now, there are a few card counting systems out there but by far the easiest and most effective is the high-low system. And that's what I'm gonna be teaching you right now. Essentially, all you need to do is watch the cards as they're dealt by the dealer. That just seems so basic. <laughs> like, that's it guys, we're done, video over. See you guys next time. Watch the cards as they're dealt by the dealer and keep a mental record of what cards have come out. To do this, you have to assign a value to each and every card, that being either plus one, negative one, or zero. Cards from two to six are valued at plus one, seven to nine are neutral or counted as zero, and 10 to ace are valued at negative one. What any blackjack player is looking for are those ace and 10 value cards. When the count is positive, we know there are more of those cards in the shoe, and vice versa. So, you can predict with a certain degree of certainty whether you're gonna be dealt a favorable card or not. As you can probably tell, this system doesn't allow you to know precisely which card is next, but in the long run, it mathematically guarantees an edge over the casino, thus generating a profit for you, the player. However, this is only true when you combine card counting with perfect basic strategy. In this next step, I'd like to talk about the running count. This is simply what you call the current state of the count in your head at any given point during the game. We start off at zero and start adding plus one and minus one as the hands are dealt. The question is, when do we start the count and when do we end it? Well, you start whenever you sit down at the table and you end it when the dealer shuffles the entire shoe. This is because the count will be reset by the shuffle and therefore, Everything you've counted until that point is essentially useless. Remember to count every single card, including yours, the dealers, and all those of any players sitting at your table. Okay, so now we're gonna play a few rounds of blackjack so you can get a feel for counting cards. Starting off with a four, so the count's now plus one. Putting on a jack, the count goes down to zero. A king, changing the count to minus one. A queen, making the count minus two. A 10, making the count minus three. A three, putting the count to minus two. A four, putting the count to minus one. And we'll show the dealer card right away. A two, evening out the count at zero. So we'll play another hand. A 10 making the count minus one. A nine, leaving the count at minus one. A two, changing the count to zero. A six, leaving the count. An ace, making the count minus one. A two, making the count zero. A four, making the count plus one. And then a queen, leaving the count off at zero. So, after counting these hands, the count has remained at zero, so it's either here nor there, and we're gonna get a good card or a bad card. At the end of these hands, if the count was minus five, we would be more likely to get lower value cards. However, if the count was higher, say plus five, 
we would be more likely to pull tens or higher. As the count goes more positive, that will give us the advantage. As the count goes more negative, that's where the casino gets theirs. If there's a lot of low cards coming out, that means there's a lot of high cards yet to come. There's one more important element to card counting, and that is the true count. This is a count that you have to keep track of, which is even more accurate than the running count. All you'll need to do is divide the running count by the number of decks that are left in the shoe, and you'll have the true count. Always round down, so if the true count is 4.5, we would round it to four. Now, why does this matter? To keep it simple, it's a calculation that takes into consideration the number of decks in the shoe, therefore making the prediction even more accurate. To know how many decks there are, so to know how much to divide the running count by. You need to just train your eye to roughly know the size of a deck. This way, you'll be able to guess how many decks are being used just by looking at the cards. Usually, casinos use anything from 6 to 8 decks, but if you're lucky, they'll use 2 or 3, making it even easier to card count. For example, if the running count is plus 5 and we're using 2 decks, we'll have to divide that by 2, resulting in 2.5, and since we have to round down, the true count will be 2. That concludes our tutorial on card counting. Remember to practice at home first or with friends before hitting the casino. If you're intending the card count in a real life scenario, just try to be covert about it and you'll be fine. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to like and comment and don't forget to subscribe for more gambling content coming soon. This was Canada Casino and I'll see you next time.